Hello and welcome to the latest Epic Universe construction update. We're getting closer and closer to the final leg of construction all around Epic Universe as all the lands in the park are starting to really come together with exterior theming and other detail work ongoing and close to being completed. So I'm excited to get in here and show you all the progress that there is to see. But before we get into the update, for those that are somehow unaware, Epic Universe is a brand new theme park coming to Universal Studios Florida. Epic Universe is located just two miles south of Universal Studios and Islands of Adventure in Orlando, Florida. This new park will include brand new lands themed to How to Train Your Dragon, The Wizarding World of Harry Potter, Universal Monsters, and my personal favorite, Super Nintendo World. Well, there's a lot to check out in this update, so let's not waste any time and get started where we usually do in these updates over in the Dark Universe to check out the progress over here. At the entrance portal to the land, we can see it's back under scaffolding as exterior theming work is wrapping up on the portal in many parts of the land. And over at the Burning Blade Tavern, it looks like the landscaping and exterior theming looks to be complete or just about complete. And there is outdoor seating under the roof at the bottom right in this picture. And over at the Curse of the Werewolf roller coaster, we can see progress in the queue area where at one is a rounded stair frame at the wolf figure cart there. And at two and three are varying stone walls lining the queue paths. Also in the queue for the Curse of the Werewolf roller coaster, we can see a sign at the top that says Carpathian Carriage Company. And in the queue here, we can still see some recently added coffins that are on a carriage. And it's already getting difficult to see some of the progress in this area near the first launch of the Curse of the Werewolf roller coaster because of all the trees that are in here, which is essentially a forest now. We can also see the steel frames that are being added over the earlier constructed brown frames for the themed tents that will go in this area. And as with many of the rides in Epic Universe, the Curse of the Werewolf coaster is still having continuous ride testing going on and the dark manor which is the frankenstein manor and the main attraction in this land which is the monsters unchained frankenstein experiment is under heavy scaffolding but we can see the roof peak was recently installed here and here is a closer look at that roof peak that was installed and here's a great shot of a turret that is staged to be installed on the frankenstein manor very soon and the pavement at the front of the Frankenstein Manor has been covered in protective plywood, but recently has been removed so we can get a good view of it now. And over in the Darkmoor Village, we can see that landscaping is in progress and gravestones have been recently painted and themed with weathering. And here is a good overall look at the current status of Darkmoor Village well, that's about it for over here in the Dark Universe. Let's jump over into the Wizarding World of Harry Potter Ministry of Magic to check out any of the progress we can see over here. At the entrance portal to the land, there isn't much to really note, but the colorful concrete pavement looks to either be finished or close to it. And on the opposite side of the entrance portal, we can see the progress of the back of the Meteor Astro Pub with brickwork in progress on the exterior. And at the arrows in this shot, we can see the golden phoenix that will be perched on the reverse side of the archway in the entrance area. And here's a good view of the theming contrast between the main part of Ministry of Magic and the inner courtyard area that will have a restaurant and perhaps more in there. We can see here this looks more weathered and aged than the rest of the land. Here at the arrows, we can see the alleys that guests will be able to access to get to that inner courtyard. And here in this view, we can see a wall at the bottom left that has been sealed. Now it's believed a show building will be added here as years from now when a new attraction could be added to the land. And here's a look at the current theming in progress at some of the storefronts and facades in the land. And from an overall aesthetics perspective, we are really starting to see the character of the land come through as exterior theming looks to be wrapping up just about everywhere here. And here we can see the theater entrance that is under the red tent and the area around it is coming together quite well also. And the outdoor cafe here where you'll be able to sit outside and enjoy pastries, coffee, and many more things is coming along as the signage and outdoor covering is in progress. And this is a great look at the fountain and statue that is in progress near the entrance of the Battle of the Ministry ride. And speaking of the Battle of the Ministry, here is the progress on the exterior theming where guests will enter through the Metro Flu entrance. Well, that's all there is to see over here in the Wizarding World. Let's head over into Super Nintendo World as there's quite a bit of progress over here that we need to check out. Now, there is actually a lot of work going on in the entrance portal of Super Nintendo World. Now, compared to the other entrance portals, this one does seem to be a little behind at least than the other ones so it seems perhaps they have more manpower over here to try and get some of this area wrapped up peach's castle is making some progress since our last visit as the roof turrets were recently added here we can see what looks like the first splash of pink coloring that is on the roof area here and there's lots of work and activity going on near peach's castle on the stairs and courtyard area we can also see a large piranha plant is staged at the bottom right in this picture 
And there's also a stone being sculpted at the stairs. And here is a look at the progress in the courtyard near Peach's Castle that is really starting to pop with color. And over near Bowser's Castle, we can see similar progress in the courtyard area there as well. And over at Bowser's Fortress itself, that is really starting to come together and looks to be almost complete with its exterior theming. And over at Yoshi's Adventure, we can see lots of color in progress over here as well. And rotating a bit, we can see how Mount Beanpole is looking as things in the land are really getting closer and closer to being completed. As again, we're seeing a lot more greens and other aspects of Nintendo elements really popping up in the land. And we can also see a Yoshi up on the ledge here. And here's a good view of that same Yoshi from a different angle. And looking over Yoshi's Adventure, we can see into Donkey Kong Country and the progress on Funky's Fly and Buy Shop, which is a shop in the land. And here is a warp pipe that is currently under construction that is part of Yoshi's Adventure where guests will ride through it. And on Yoshi's Adventure, the ride cars are being covered, but we can see the permanent rails are here now, and there is lighting elements being installed along the track also. In the courtyard of the land, we can see at the arrow is where Toadstool's Cafe will be, and its current progress. And moving over into Donkey Kong Country, we can see Dixie Kong has been installed along the track of Minecart Madness. And around Minecart Madness, it looks like a jungle has essentially popped up quickly as this area is really starting to take shape and how it has been shown in the concept art and in the model of the land that can be seen in the Epic Universe Preview Center at CityWalk. And the theming for the waterfall that is part of Minecart Madness is still under scaffolding, but it's clear to see progress is being made underneath there. And more theming progress can be seen along the ride here, and we can also see the tinted area for the queue looks to be completed as well. And at the entrance to Minecart Madness, and we can see there's a recently added structure and tents, and the ride exit is the walkway along the wall to the right side of this picture. And at the section near Minecart Madness, we can see at the arrow where some interactive drums will be. And these are likely to be the drums where you will use your power-up band to activate them and do special activities and extra things inside of Super Nintendo World. And here's a good look at the current work for a photo op, which is Donkey Kong's house, and a barrel-themed snack stand called the Bubbly Barrel. And over at the splashdown area of Minecart Madness, there is painting in progress. In this section, minecarts will skim across the water here, but again, the track is actually on the side, so it'll seem like you're jumping gaps in the track and going through other elements. Well, that's about it over here in Super Nintendo World to check out. Let's go over into the How to Train Your Dragon Isle of Burke to check out the progress over here. At the entrance portal, we can see there's a lot of progress on the rock work theming on the portal itself, and the colorful concrete pattern that will be in front of the portal is in its early stages of development. And in the bay, there's a great shot at one of the large statues in a Viking ship that will welcome guests as they enter the land. And there will also be flames coming from the mouths of the statues. Along the bay, there are some trees that have been recently added along the shoreline here. And over at the second launch of Hiccup's Wing Gliders coaster, we can see around this is where the Viking training camp area will be. And what we said in our last update that we probably would see the tents being installed pretty soon, we now can see that these tents have been installed. We can see more tents here, and there's a lot of progress on the Viking training camp area as a whole as well. And here's a great shot of a walk-up ramp section of the Viking training camp area and the rock theming looks to be complete or at least close to it and over at the dragon racers rally nearby the framing for tents over the queue area have popped up we can also see a banner that has been added there as well and staying on the theme of queue tents we can also see tent frames for hiccups wing gliders are making some progress and at the load and unload station of hiccups wing gliders we can see the roof here looks to be complete but it's likely to get some theming elements to add aging and weathered elements to it. A few updates ago, we got a blurry glimpse of Toothless in the launch building here, but here is a great shot of him and a clear shot of him in the same building. And the entrance of Hiccup's wing gliders is coming along as there's a dragon facade and exterior theming is likely to start up here very soon. And here's the current status of some of the dragon houses above the village in the land, which are looking very colorful and very much like the movies. And over at Mead Hall, the pair of Vikings that are on both sides of the entrance are now revealed and they look fantastic. And here's the current status of Spitfire Grill, and at the ground level is staging of targets for the fire drill boat ride. And in front of Spitfire Grill, this is the current work on the outdoor seating area for the restaurant. And over at Fire Drill, the water shooter boat ride, we can get a great look at some of the targets that guests will shoot water cannons at. And I have to say, it's really hard to see exactly what is going on with this ride in this area because it seems like it's just jammed full of targets, dragons, and more as it has a lot going on, a lot of kinetic energy, and I can imagine will be a really good time for kids. And at the load and unload station of Fire Drill, we can see the roof 
still has some work left to do on it. Well, that about do it over here in the Isle of Burke. Let's head over into Celestial Park to check out the progress in this land. There isn't much to note on Stardust Racers, but it doesn't look like there's been much progress since our last update on the comet, but there have been a lot more trees been placed in this area since our last update. And we did see in the last update, the Helios statue was visible, and now we can see he is holding a bow and arrow. And there hasn't been much to update on the fountain in Celestial Park in our last few updates, but it looks like in the seating area around the fountain that artificial turf is being installed in those seating areas. And over at the Blue Dragon Pan Asian restaurant, there is progress on the landscaping around the restaurant over there. And over at Constellation Carousel, there is a berm being built of foam blocks that we've seen a couple of updates ago. And the lower tiers of the pond have a green covering now. We can also see the progress of the splash pad area that looks like a compass rose, and this splash pad is called Astronomica. And over at the carousel itself, work is ongoing inside, and we can see the colorful concrete pattern nearby looks to be complete. And here are some views of the current progress on some of the restaurants in Celestial Park. And speaking of restaurants in Celestial Park, over at Atlantic Restaurant, there is recently added garden walls near the entrance there. And the other statue in Celestial Park at the Luna Overlook is covered in scaffolding, and we can see exterior theming being done on nearby rocks as well. We'll jump over real quick to look at the entrance plaza over here. There isn't really much to note, but the park Kronos, which is the entrance portal to the entire park, has made some more progress since our last update. And jumping over to check out the hotels in and around Epic Universe, we can see at the Stella Nova Resort that there's a lot of progress in the pool and recreation area. And Terra Luna's pool area has made progress, but it isn't as far along as Stella Nova, but it does make sense as Stella Nova is going to open before Terra Luna does. And over at Terra Luna, we now have more of the colorful pavement that is present all throughout Epic Universe, and it is present over here as well. And the Kirkman Road extension between Terra Luna and Stella Nova Resorts is getting close to being completed as there is landscaping around it and we can see here the center lane is for the dedicated universal buses and near stella nova and terra luna we can see in the top right of this shot where a dual branded even and Staybridge Suite Hotel is being built and should be open in 2025. And over at the Helios Grand Hotel, we can see a lot of progress on landscaping at the guest access road. And the pool area of the Helios Grand Hotel, we can see a lot of progress in the pool and cabana area. And the dome for the pool bar has recently been added as well. And the Helios Grand Hotel itself hasn't made a ton of visible progress, but the main golden dome is closer to being completed. And as usual, this hotel is looking great. And before we finish, finish up our construction tour, let's take a look at the roadways around Epic Universe as this is going to be an important aspect of this park and how we'll handle the influx of people coming in for Epic Universe. Here's the current status of what will be Universal's electric bus service area. While not part of the roadways, here is the progress on the new Universal Creative Offices. And many of Universal's administrative buildings are going to be moved near Epic Universe, which does potentially free up those areas of the existing parks to be used for expansions in the future as they are likely looking to add a lot more things to the existing parks. We can also see a lot of these admin buildings here in this shot. At one, we have the new Universal Creative Offices. At two is team member building and adjacent parking. Three is a recently added service building. And at four is a large warehouse that has been supplying Universal Parks and Resorts for many months now. The raised traffic circle near Epic Universe is really starting to take shape and will be both a functional aspect for traffic, but also a landmark of sorts for the area. Now I'm gonna be doing a separate video on many of the aspects of the traffic areas around Epic Universe and their construction progress and when they could be done as we've learned a little bit more details about how all this road work and roadways will function. And here in this view, we can see the new interchange of Sand Lake and Kirkman Road and the former Sand Lake overpass has been demolished. And there's also been beams recently placed at the Sand Lake Road interchange with I-4. And here's a great visual from BioReconstruct that takes all these pictures. So again, shout out to BioReconstruct, but he also made this little image here showing how the traffic will flow in this area. And you have I-4 westbound to shift to the new overpass, a cloverleaf ramp to replace the left turned Sand Lake westbound to Turkey Lake southbound, and the Sand Lake exit to shift, and match the other side of the diverging diamond. And here we can get a look at the diverging diamond that will take place here to help with the traffic flow. And here is another photo of the work at the Sand Lake Road interchange with I-4, a clover leaf ramp to replace the left turn Sand Lake westbound to the Turkey Lake southbound. Well, that's gonna do it for this epic universe construction update. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel before you go. As always, we will be doing more epic universe news updates, land previews, 
construction updates, and more theme park news as work on this new park continues. And if you want even more Universal Studios and Disney World information, you can check out the Capture the Magic podcast where we share tips, reviews, money-saving strategies, and more. You can find the podcast wherever you listen to podcasts and also here on YouTube over at CTM Podcast. And as always, let us know in the comments what you think about all this and what are your updated opening timeline predictions for Epic Universe. And until next time, we will see you in the parks.